and you just you just tell me if I want one day when I'm a little over here with the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. I know that was a good one. Most times people keep them in. Amen. You're the pros, so you just tell me and I'll put it up there. All right, I apologize. We should be going live now, get everything set. Walker Square is up to butt, watching strike two come in. Kipper Williams starts off with a stand up double. We are here at Lamar School up in Meridian, Mississippi, for the first game of a three game matchup between district foes out of North District Two. Umpire said he didn't go. Kana Fields is a guy down first base line as he is out there with the gentleman standing on second base. That's Kemper Williams. One ball, two strikes to Walker Hall. Ty Harrington on the plate, excuse me, on the mound for Lamar School this afternoon. Walker watches ball two, low and outside. Apologize for the late start. I was trying to get up here. Just didn't make it in time. I told him when I walked in the door upstairs, the guy's calling for Meridian. I guess I should leave it off and we can get everybody getting doubles. But nonetheless, Kipper Williams starts his soft. They're swinging hard hit double. Stand up double at that. Two hole hitter. The exit hitter tonight is Walker Hall. Two balls, two strikes. Jaguars got a guy in running score position. Walker fouls off. Nice curveball there by Harrington. Really nice pitch. Really, really tough wind blowing left to right. They see a ball get out of right field, but I doubt you see anything go out of left field tonight unless they really crank on it. Here's the pitch. Ball takes that one low. Full count. Three balls, two strikes. Fouls off another nice pitch right there by Harrington. Coming with a curveball. Three balls, two strikes, nobody out. Two hole hitters to play for the Jaguars. Harrington steps off the plate. Second baseman is going to call time, bring his catcher out there. Probably going to talk about changing their signals. Anytime you see something like that, they feel like somebody's picking up on their signals. The second baseman calls time out. Brings his catcher out there. Beautiful infield here, beautiful field here at Lamar School. Whole infield is nothing but solid turf, so absolutely gorgeous complex that we're at. We'll be here tonight, back at Wayne Academy tomorrow night, and back here on Thursday. Nice line drive, base hit to right field. Let's see if it's going to score Kemper Williams. They're going to send him, and that's going to get the first run of the in game. Nice job by Walker Hall, but hitting behind the runner and pushing that ball to right field. Took the fastball and just pushed it there. Nice, Next nice piece of hitting by those first two guys. We'd love to see number two, Kate Lowry. Lowry. He's been doing a nice job so far this year, all year long, of hitting the baseball. I'd like to see this continue. So two guys up, get back-to-back -back hits. Need to keep it going with number two, Caden Lowry. Now he's in the three hole tonight for the Jaguars. Another base hit right back up the middle. Line drive gets past the center fielder to fall. He dies for it. Jaguars goes good another one in. Walker Hall rounds third. He's coming home. Caden's going to go into third with a stand up triple. As the center fielder came in to go for that ball, just went, went just under his glove and all the way to the fence. So, Next wow, Jaguars get another one in, guys. Three up. Left fielder, number three solid hits. Colton Stringer. You got a triple, a double, and a single. And Colton Stringer is the next one up. So let's see if we can make a home run out of this one. Fastball stays a little high for ball one. Colton, right-handed hitter. We haven't seen him put one out all year long. I've talked many times about it with the power that he's got. Hits it back to the shortstop. It's going to score another run. 
And it is going to be there in time for the out. But nonetheless, going to get an RBI out of that one. Nice job of hitting again. So bring up next to the plate, 19, Davin Lowry. Davin's going to first the plate with a three-run lead. One out here in the top of the third. Number 19, Davin Lowry. Davin's playing first base tonight. Fly ball, left center field. Center field is drifting underneath it. Looks like he's got a bead on it, and he does. That's a good hard hit ball right there, held up by the wind. If not, it probably carries a little further. Here in the top of the first inning, is, next to the plate for Wayne Academy, is the, the center fielder, number three, Jackson White. Brings up to the next, number, next to the plate, number three, Jackson White. Everybody's starting to gather here to the ball game tonight, getting settled in. Jackson looks at ball one, a little high and inside. Fastball low and outside. Foul back off this right hand side. Lands on top of their athletic complex here over to my right. If you're maybe coming in, this is where they lift weights. Football field house. Here we go. One ball, one strike, two outs. Jackson holds off that one. That pitch is low and outside. Fastball, fair ball, in the inside the third baseline. Jackson White's turning first. Going to get two for sure. Probably going to hold him up on second. The ball's coming in from left field. So another really, really hard hit baseball by the Jaguars. So that's the second double of this inning for the Jaguars. Now batting for Wayne Academy is the pitcher, number 15, Ian Smith. Ian Smith got up to the plate. He'll be on the mound tonight for the Jaguars. Another base hit is going to put another run across. Jaguars going to need all they can get against a very good Lamar school. It's ball one. A little low. Fastball on the outside corner, call strike one. Not a bad pitch by Harrington. One ball, one strike, two outs. We're still in the top of the first inning. Jaguars lead by score three to nothing on four hits. Swing and strike two. Nice curve ball by Harrington. One ball, two strikes, two outs. bounces out. I'm not sure if he's trying to throw a slider or, or what really right there. But nonetheless, uh, didn't look like a curveball to me. But anyway, two balls, two strikes, two outs. Foul ball off the right hand side. It's going to be out of play. Nice job by Ian staying alive. You hear Coach Hillman down the third baseline to him to stay flat, stay flat. Got a lot of room behind the runner on the right-hand side as the second baseman's holding on that runner. I can hear the wind blowing back in my face here. Really nice third ball for the swing and strike three for the third out of the inning. But nonetheless, Jack Warren. Right, in the top of the first inning, it was three runs on four base hits, one error, and one runner left on. We didn't call an error on the center fielder in the process of diving for that ball. I'm, I'm not really sure about the technical terms of how you score errors or don't score errors. I don't know if he actually hit the ball with his glove or was able to the ball with his glove, but nonetheless, he scored an error in that situation. That's why I'm going to open up this game with Cole Wade standing on third base, Kipper Williams standing on shortstop. Eli Booty's heading out to second base for the Jaguars. Number 19, Davin Lowry holding on to first base. Caden Lowry is going to catch tonight for the Jaguars. 15, Ian Smith 
is back on the mound. Left fielder is going to be Colton Stringer. Jackson White back in the center field position and holding down that right field side is Drake Frazier. Obviously, you come out of that inning getting runs. Anytime you get runs out of any inning, you got to feel good about it. But as good as Ian Smith has thrown all year, when I say that, I don't know how he puts the ball all around the plate. He just did a magnificent job. Forcing them to swing the bat and put the ball in play. He's got some play so far this year, really good behind him. The Jaguars come into this series. Two and one overall in district play. Lamar comes in three and oh. They beat East Rank in three games last week. Jaguars took two out of three away from the League Academy. The other two in this division is Simpson Academy and Park Place. And Simpson took three away from Park Place. I'm not sure who Simpson and Park Place played this week. I think it's Leaf. I do know that. Leaf and Simpson played this week. And that's going to put Park Place against East Rankin. Leak and Simpson are scheduled to play tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday, I believe, is their schedule. And I'm not sure about East Rankin and Park Place. Jaguars going to play tonight. Obviously, they'll play again tomorrow night at home. You'll see two games tomorrow night. The first inning for Lamar is the pitcher, number 18, Ty Harrington. Ty Harrington is going to be the leadoff for Lamar School. And then again, Thursday afternoon, Jaguars will be back up here in action against the Lamar School Raiders. Sharp hit ball right back up the middle. Harrington takes the first fastball he sees and puts it out in the left center field for a base hit. That's what you want to see if you're Lamar. You can't score them if you can't get them on base. And he does a good job. Thanks for playing for your Raiders. is the shortstop, number three, Jackson Wickham. Jackson Whitcomb next to the plate. Play shortstop tonight for Lamar School. Ball strike one in the inside corner. Nice pitch. One stays a little low. Back behind the runner, we're trying to make sure Harrington doesn't get too far off. Moody is shaded at second base, is shaded really close towards the second base bag, but I think the Jaguars may be going to know where they want to pitch him defensively and have him pushed over there. I'm not real sure. Right fielder, not too far off the line, and Drake Fraser. Number two stays a little bit too far inside to get that call. Really not a bad pitch. You expect him to swing at that one, but nice job of laying off of it with him. Everything with a modest lead, nothing crazy. Ball hit foul and out of bounds just outside the first base bag. And even up to count, two balls, two strikes. Two balls, two strikes, nobody out. We're in the bottom of the first. Ty Harrington got on. There's a swing and hit back to the shortstop. Steps on the bag at second base for one and goes to the first for the second. It's a nice job. Taylor made double play right there by Kipper Williams. Well, he's done a nice job all year long. Next play for your Raiders is the center fielder, nice number win. 10, Wyatt Bond. Yeah, two guys off, off the base pads quickly. Next to the base, number 10, Wyatt Bond. Fly ball, hit the center field. Jackson White makes a run to it, settles underneath it, and makes the catch with the third out of the inning. Three up, three down for the Jaguars. Just like Ian Smith has done so far all this year, 
he has just come in there and put it all around the strike zone and done a very good job of just keeping everybody at bay. You don't see a lot of strikeouts from Ian. Um, I'm really just not sure why. He's one standing up there. I, don't, I couldn't hit any of them, to be honest with you. But uh, he strikes out his fair share, but he does do a good job of keeping the ball on the ground a lot and allowing the Jaguars to make the plays behind him, and they have done so all year long. Really, really nice job by Ian. Ian also comes back and plays behind the plate. He has to catch the Jaguars. Jaguars got had three catchers. You got this year you're gonna be dealing with Kate Lowry, the gentleman behind the plate now, and you got Ian Smith. Normally Walker Hall would be back there as well, but due to the injury, he is not going to be behind the plate. So, coaches try to give those guys as much rest, all about Katie and Ian as much as they can, just because it's so much of a workout for them being behind the plate and on the mound. Because Katie also comes in. Looking off the top of the second inning for Wayne Academy is the right fielder, really, really nice number nine, Drake Frazier. Doing what they need to do next to the plate for the Jaguars. Going to be leading off number nine, Drake Frazier, right fielder today. Change up. Nice pitch right there by Harrington. Started with a change up. He's, everybody else came pretty hard with a fastball back in the first game. Way out of front of that one. There he comes with the change. You see it with the fastball. He's just a good bit high. One ball, one strike. Harrington working the ball around his glove. That's what we get here. Comes with the curveball. You tell. And I'm not saying I can sit here and pick up pitches, but that particular one just held on it like he couldn't get his hand where he wanted placed on the ball. Two balls, one strike. Here we go. Ooh. Gets the call strike in the lower part of the zone on that one. Looks a little low from here, but nonetheless, got the call. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody out. That's a really nice pitch by Harrington right there. Curveball stayed right on the outside corner. It hadn't been, he has not located there all night long. Second baseman, number 12, Eli Moody. That's going to bring next to the plate nine hole hitter, number 12, Eli Moody. Moody playing second base for the Jaguars tonight. He has been the majority of the year due to injuries. Moody with a base hit right back up the middle. Excuse me, that's not a base hit. That's a really good hit, but uh, center fielder playing a lot shallower than he has been and was able to come up and make the dive and catch. Well, the second out of the inning. Here so in the top, top of the, the second inning, it's to the seven, plate for Wayne Academy, Academy is the shortstop, number seven, Kipper Williams. That's a tough one for Moody. Ball just seemed like it hung up in the air just a tad bit too long for him after a solid hit back up the middle, but nonetheless. And the fielder able to make that catch. If the Williams looks at her ball, stays too, too high, ball one. If we're going to call time. If it pulls off the swing on the ball that bounces in. Fastball located on the outside corner. Two balls, one strike, two outs. We're at the top of the second inning. Kemper is able to hold off of that one. Right, swing, it'll be ball three. Three balls, one strike. Lead off guy. At the plate for the Jaguars. He's a three hole hitter in this inning, but the leadoff guy. Gonna take ball four. And bring next to the plate 21, Walker Hall, two hole next hitter. Next to the plate for Wayne Academy is the designated hitter, number 21, Walker Hall. Let's 
Walker getting the signals from Coach Dusty Hillman down the third baseline. Hadn't seen anybody steal yet, so we don't know what kind of arm the catcher's got. I definitely have no clue what kind of arm. Here, maybe get somebody in fair position. A one comes in a little hot outside. One ball, no strikes. Two outs. Kemper Williams standing on first. It'll be ball two outside. Always nice to come up here in this area. A lot of these guys play ball together throughout the year and see a lot of familiar faces. And uh, obviously, when they're on the on the field here, it's all competition. We're against each other, but uh, it is nice to. See these kids interact with each other off the field as they played a lot of ball together throughout the years. Runner's gone. Walker's going to take. Megan Kipper Way is going to slide in. He may get the third out of this one. Nope. Uh, I think I think it had a take sign that for Walker Hall. Obviously, if it was an all-speed pitch, he's going to take it, and that's what it was. Stayed low, but got the call strike. So two balls, one strike. Kemper Williams in score position. Let's see if Walker Hall can put another drive out in the right center field and get him around. Ball hit back to the left-hand side. Shortstop feels it. Walker Hall is running. He steps. Oh, man. That was a call out. Oh, God. Please. Jaguars don't get the benefit of a close call in that one, so not able to put another one across the board, but it was a really, really close play. Um, Off the bottom of the second inning for your Raiders is the third baseman, number seven, Sully Reed. And for the Rebels, number seven, Sully Reed. Back on the mound for the Jaguars, 15, Ian Smith. All one a little bit too far inside. Jaguars stay the same defensively, no changes there. Wouldn't expect anything this early in the ball game. Third ball, little dinky hit to right field, and that's going to fall in for a hit. That's just in no man's land. Uh, that's just a tough one. I mean, it's just a not hard hit ball at all, and it's it's too shallow for Drake Frazier to get to it and too far out for Moody to make the run over there to it. So. Next to play for your Raiders is the first baseman, number four, Wes Pritchard. Next to the plate, familiar face to several of the Jaguars players. And coaches, number four, Wes Pritchard, plays on the same team with a lot of the Jaguars. Yeah, like I said, a lot of familiar faces. 
Well, that's a very good baseball player in his own right. Going to be going to play college ball at East Central Community College. Feel quite certain Jaguars probably see him on the mound tomorrow night at Wayne Academy. Very, very good pitcher. West fouls that ball down the left hand side. It was started fair territory and just kept slicing really hard. And it's a low inside pitch. He really didn't have anywhere he could go with it. So uh, just pushes it down that left field side. One ball, one strike. Nobody out. Lead off guy on. A little blue base hit back to the right side. All strike on the inside corner. And I'll turn back in towards the batter caught the inside corner. Really not much at all. Pritchard could have done with that one. It's one of those curve balls or change ups. I'm really not sure what it is, but it was going down at his back foot. It's a nice location. That one stays a little high for ball two. Two balls, two strikes. Not sure if you could see it or not, but the umpire out there is counting his hand. If you'll see him putting his hand out behind the pitcher. That's a good call. Strike three right there on Pritchard on the inside corner. He doesn't like it, but that's a really, really good pitch by Ian Smith for the first time. Number eight, Nate Lee. Nate hitter, number eight, Nate Lee at the plate. For Lamar School. But uh, once that umpire out there, occasionally he'll start counting. Uh, like something you see in basketball officials do. There's a new rule in high school baseball. It's in public school. Ball hit back to the third baseman. Goes to second for the first. We'll see if they can turn two. And they do. Really nice job to get that thing started by number 17, Cole Wade. Going to Moody at second base. And they go start to get some third base. 19, Davin Lowry. The Jaguars got two base hits and two innings. It's a really good job defensively by the Jaguars there. But I'll go back to what I was talking about a minute ago. It's a new rule in high school baseball. You don't see it in the private schools yet, but it's in the public schools. And they have a pitch clock. I think it's at 25 seconds, I believe is what it is. It could be a little more, a little less, but somewhere in that range that when the pitcher gets the ball on the mound, that's all he's got to pitch it. And um, personally, I like it. it. Kind of speeds the game up. Doesn't let anybody kind of just sit there and do nothing. Uh, you see a lot less timeout calls. Jaguars have only had one of those called on them this year. We did play in the Battle of the Beach, I think is what they called it, on the coast a couple of weeks ago during spring break. And uh, we had one called against us down there. It didn't affect the game. We just put a, we just put a ball up on the board in the particular situation that we were in. Nonetheless, we were able to get out of that and it didn't harm us. But, uh, I do feel like you may see that coming later on in private school ball. It's kind of like everything else, speed the game up. If you were a, a fan or familiar with Wayne Academy baseball, I do believe we've got to be really close to being one of the, the teams with the longest lasting games. I think we've played two or three games this year that are over um, two and a half, pushing almost three hours. And that's really, really long for seven inning play. I mean, we had a game the other night go two hours and 15 minutes, and it was a zero to zero ball game in the seventh Being inning. Off the top of the third inning for Wayne is number two, Kate Lowry. Kate Lowry leading off the Jaguars. Kate's a three hole hitter tonight. Gonna be the leadoff hitter here at the top of the third. Lamar lined up pretty much dead away. Let's go look at ball one go in there. The other night, Jaguars played. Uh, a league academy. That was a scoreless ball game into the seventh inning. Neither pitcher had over 90 pitches. Hard hit ball to the right side. Line drive. Caden's going to continue a really, really hot streak at the plate for the Jaguars. Nice job by number two, Caden Lowry. That brings up Colton Stringer. So the courtesy runner going in. For Cade Lauer as a catcher, number four, Kale Gray, I'm going in to run. I'm going to hold up and get the signals from Coach Hillman. Second baseman's going to shade way over towards the second base bag. A lot of room on the right field side if the Jaguars can push it over there. 
Also Spot running for the catcher at first base for Wayne is number four, Cal Graham. With the game the other night, neither pitcher went over, I believe, 90 pitches. So there's not a lot of pitches being thrown. And it still took almost two hours and 15 minutes. Really kind of hard to figure that one out, but nonetheless, that's how long it went. Jaguars ended up winning that one on a walk-off. Fastball must have been just a tad bit too low. I'm really not sure where that pitch missed, but I'm sitting on the opposite side of that. I'm going to move it over here and the right side of the box, on the right batter's box. Now a ball. Two balls, one strike, nobody out. Leadoff guy got on by way of a hard hit base. Base hit back to the right side, Caden Lowry. Got a pinch runner in for him and Kale Graham standing on first. Kale keeps inching a little more. And that is going to be the second time this year that Colton Stringer has been hit in the head with a baseball. Thank goodness both of them were all speed pitches, but next to the plate, we'll put another base Davis runner on for the Jaguars. The that's going to bring up 19, Davin, 19 Lowry. Davin Lowry. Davin get hot last week at Leak Academy, hit back to back home runs at Leak. I'll tell you what, if he hits one out of here to the left hand side, he has absolutely crushed the baseball. The wind's blowing at least 15, if not more. And he hammers that ball to the left hand side. And I'm going to tell you what, it would have gone off the, maybe the top of the wall just foul by about maybe eight feet down the left field line. But he ever more stroked that ball. No balls, one strike. I was with a prime opportunity to add more. He got a one runner in score position at second base. Holding off of that one. Let the ball come in high. Eric has been able to locate the curveball early on. Halfway decent. But he's, last few times he's tried to throw it, it stayed just too, too high. There it is, right there. That's a nice pitch. Swing and strike, too. One ball, two strikes. Nobody out. Coach Hillman telling him to make the adjustments. Ball gets past the second baseman and the shortstop goes into the outfield as they try to pick off Kale Graham. That's going to allow Kale to get to third. So now you got a runner standing at third. Nobody out. Colton Stringer with good speed standing at first. Not sure if you'll see him do anything here with still nobody out. But Jack Ward may try it. Most middle infield for Lamar School is playing a really tight second base. Runner goes. Oh, and that looked like it hit him there as he tried to get out of the way of that one. I think that one may have gone off his shoulder and his head. Hard to see. Umpire comes out and checks. I think it may have gone off his helmet. Uh, they told him to check. Yeah, top of his shoulder is what he's saying. It bounced off his shoulder and then into the helmet. So uh, you see the umpire come up quickly checking him. So that's going to put Jackson White at the plate. Base is loaded. Nobody out. Jaguars need Jackson just to stay flat through the ball. He got plenty of power, can put it out of here really in any direction, but uh, we just need a hard hit baseball to get to the wall right now. Just need to add the runs any way you can. Corners up for Lamar School. Jackson hits a hard hit ball, gonna get past the third baseman. Got one run, goal score, they wave it in the second one. Here comes the relay. It'll try to be cut off and it's held. So the throw from the third baseman is trying to hit the third, excuse me, throw from the left fielder trying to hit the third baseman. The third baseman wasn't able to make the Next cutoff. The Jaguars time. Is the Stringer was pretty good. It's be a Smith. tough throw at the plate to get him. So Jaguar is able to add two so far. Well, a nice hard hit ball by number three, Jackson White. It's going to bring next to the plate, Ian Smith. 
Jaguars still got runners standing on first and second. Nobody out. Ian Smith, line drive to the right-hand side. That's a good hit baseball. Bobby Lowry had to hold up because um, the ball was hit so hard. I wasn't sure if it's going to carry to the right fielder, but that's a really good job of hitting the baseball again. Ian Smith, that's the right number nine, Drake, number Frazier. Drake Frazier. And Drake's been struggling at the plate. I think it's going to be more mental than it is uh, the physical side of it, but he's been struggling at the plate lately, and I think Coach Dusty's going to calm him down and say, hey, get back to know what you how to do. We've seen Drake hit the ball and hit the ball very, very well. So I think he's just calming him down, just telling him to relax. Nobody out. Runners still on every base for the Jaguars. Looks like 11 Cohen Wallace. It looks like in the run. I can't tell for sure. He's going to take a call, strike on a curveball, high in the zone, but nonetheless, pitcher gets a call on that one. It really wasn't a lot he could do with that, with that pitch. Gets a call, strike two on that one. 0 2 the count. Yeah, that's number 11, Cord Wally, standing on first base for the Jaguars. I think it's strike three. That's going to be the first out of the inning for the Jaguars. Going to bring up nine home hitters, number 12. Second baseman, number 12, Eli Moody. by Eli Moody. Moody had a nice hit his first time up, but the center fielder just played really, really short, came up and was able to to make a good play on a line drive. So, again, we'll take a line drive right here. That'll get one more in. He's going to take a call, strike one. Nice curveball by Harrington. No balls, one strike, one out. Bases loaded for the Jaguars. We're at the top of the third. Ball hit back up the middle. Second baseman's going to get it and try to come to first. It's going to be off the first baseman's glove. The Jaguars are, oh, me, Moody's not really sure what we got going on. <laughs> All right, that was a crazy sequence of events, but uh, ball hit back up the middle. Second baseman grabbed it, stepped on second for the second out of the inning, tried to come to first with a double play, not able to snag it was the first baseman. Ball gets in the air. He tries to throw uh, out Jackson White, White coming home, throws it past the third base, excuse me, past the catcher. So the next run scores, and then Moody is trying to figure out if he can go to second because the guy that got – the force out at second was running off, and he was scared he was actually going to run past another runner. But nonetheless, Moody able to stand at second. Got two outs, four runs across the plate so far in this inning. We're back to the top of the lineup, number seven, Kemper Williams. He's going to call time. Harrington hadn't even moved. <laughs> Harrington doesn't step off or anything. He stays out there ready for the next pitch. So pretty much the same sequence he started Kipper with the last time, starting with a fastball and he came back with a curveball. Let's see what he starting goes back to here. Nice pitch on the outside corner. Kipper doesn't like it, but uh, that, that was way too close to, I hate to say not swing at, it's only your second strike, but that's a really good pitch by Harrington. The other standing in score position is Eli Moody. Curveball hit foul down the left field line. Looks like third base coach Dusty Hillman snags that one. One ball, two strikes, two outs. We're in the top of the fourth. Excuse me, top of the third. Jaguars put four runs up here in the top of the third. Holding on to a seven to nothing lead right now. Curveball stays too high to get the call. I've been calling that a curveball. That may not be a curveball because he's like exactly, exactly. There's a fastball going to be hit foul down the left field line. Good snag by third base coach Dusty Hillman. But it almost looks like he's trying to place that ball right there. And the more I see him throw it, I've been saying he's missing it. But I'm, I'm not so sure he's not. 
intentionally putting that ball right there, trying to get the Jaguars to swing out in front of it. Two balls, two strikes, and that's another foul ball right back at us. Nice job by Kemper Williams staying alive. We're through the third inning. You got to be your Lamar Raider fan. You got to be watching that pitch count now on Harrington. As Jaguars have done a good job of running it up in most at bats. That one comes high. Moody going to be able to take third as it gets past the catcher. And that was a ball right there that if, if Kipper Williams stays up, nobody wants to get hit in the head. But if he stays up on that one, that one bounces off his head as well. Nonetheless, three balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner standing 90 feet away. That's another foul ball. Sure if you could hear Coach Hillman down the third base line, tell him just to win it and win it, keep fighting. Base hits definitely going to score one. Moody's standing 90 feet away. High fly ball hit back over the left hand side. It's probably going to land somewhere close to the football bleachers. Way out in front. So, as far out in front as he is right here, let's see if we don't see a curveball try to be thrown in there. You got to locate him. You're going to put him on base, but let's see if we don't see one right here. All right, came back with a fastball on the outside corner and just too far outside. That's going to bring you two hole hitter, number 21, Walker Hall to the plate. Walker got. Next to the plate for Wayne Academy is the designated hitter, 21, Walker Hall. Walker had a base hit his first time up back to. Right field. Last time up, hit a slow roller back to the shortstop. Looked like he had beat it out, but nonetheless got called out. Let's see if we can get another line drive here, get another run pushed across. Fly ball, right side, right fielder drifted back, selling underneath it. Wind's pushing it further to the side. Oh, and I guess he made the catch. So that is going to be the third out of the inning. Looked like he had possibly dropped it. Hard to tell where I'm standing with a pole right in my way. But uh, Coach Hillman's going to ask for an appeal. But um, obviously, you're not going to get anything out of that. And you see him talking with him right there. But. Jaguars going to go into the bottom of the third, holding on to a seven to nothing lead over Lamar School Raiders. Nice job of putting the bat on the ball right there. Just need to continue to keep doing the same thing. And need to keep that gentleman on the mound wearing that number 15. Keep doing what he's doing. Really nice job of just filling up the strike zone and not giving free base runners. I know I'm just going to state the obvious right here, as most people will know, but high school baseball is about not giving free base runners and making the the routine plays. Uh, for the most part, the team in high school ball who can consistently make the routine plays and not give away too many free base runners is going to come out the victor in that ball game. Obviously, there comes a time when you got to be able to Basically, not sure what's going on there. I was looking at the, um, the conversation going on between the first base coach and the home plate umpire. I think they just talking to each other. Obviously, no complaints or anything going there. It's more the umpire explaining something to him. I'm not sure what he was explaining to him, though. So we can great start to bottom of the third. Nine or number five, I can't tell with his jersey. Oh, and there we go with that feed free base run. Just talked about not giving it away. It's number five, Walker Mims, and that one hit him right in the, the kidney area of his back. I think he's going to be the catcher. 
as he's going back off. So probably have a courtesy runner coming in. So Excellent must be the play for your Raiders is the right fielder, number six, Brody Mayad. Right fielder coming up. Where's number six? Got a courtesy runner coming in. First pitch misses outside for ball one. Here's some of the Jaguar fans trying to talk to umpire to call that one, but way too far outside to get the call strike. There's a ball hit back up the middle. Let's see if we can turn two. We get one. And the first base is a little too slow. You saw Kipper Williams throw that out of his glove. It took a little bit longer than relay, and I'm not sure if it would have been any faster or not, but he just caught it with his glove. For your Raiders is the second baseman, number 15, Jacob Irby. But I don't think it would have been any faster had he done it with his hand. At the plate, 15, Jacob Irby. Hard hit ball to the second baseman. Second baseman, Moody getting underneath it. Going to go to first for the first one. He is. Nice play by Moody getting around on that one. That's going to bring you back. Looks like the top of the line. Play for the Raiders is the pitcher, number 18, Ty Harrington. Harrington, leadoff hitter for Lamar School. Reached his first time up with a hard hit line drive back to left center field. First pitch he saw was a fastball. He jumped all over it. Got a gentleman standing in score position. Jaguars just looking for a, either a fly ball or a ground ball right here. Get him out of this one. He bounces that one up for ball one. One ball, no strikes, two outs. We're in the bottom of the third. Jaguars holding on to a seven to nothing lead over the Lamar School Raiders. They're threatening. Hard hit ball back to the shorts. Excuse me, second base. And Moody comes up with a slide and play. That is a great, great play right there by second baseman number two. Well, excuse me, Eli Moody. Um, that wipes away any opportunity for them to be able to score here in the bottom of the third. All right, so I'm not sure what the umpire was talking about, but there's a conversation going on between the first base coach coming back to his catcher. So I'm going to guess that there was some type of possible batter interference or runner interference um, during that last sequence when Wayne Academy was at the plate. Really not sure, but I'm just trying to connect the dots together as to the sequence that went through. The Jaguars coming into the top of the fourth. He's going to be starting off with a three-hole hitter. He wears number two. He goes by the name of Caden Lowry. Same catcher today for the Jaguars. New pitcher on the mound. So Harrington's going to go to second base. Excuse me, shortstop. Second base is going to stay the same. And this gentleman on the mound has thrown nothing but curve balls to warm up. Catcher catcher gonna beat up, make sure they got their signals correct. Eight hours last time up, had a hard line drive back to right field. I believe he was a leadoff hitter for the Jaguars back in the third inning. 
I'll watch that one bounce up there, and that catches the umpire in his hand. That's a tough one. We'll have to walk that one off. It bounces, it gets past the catcher, and it hits the umpire right in his hand, it's just above his wrist, and he's trying to check it. I'm not sure if we may have a trainer go out and check him on this one. That one hit really hard. He dropped his clip immediately. Um, you can see him pulling back. I'll say you can see him. He's very, very tender to the touch. As a trainer here is checking him out. Man, this is a tough, tough situation right here. You can tell he is in a lot of pain. Trying to take the He has ended up taking his watch off. Trying to move his hand around now. If he may have been hit in the hand with the baseball, and that was the Turf here, it's not natural turf, it's artificial turf, so the ball skips when it hits off of it. And catcher not able to get his hand on it or glove on it at all, so it comes right off that turf and skips right into his left hand. You can see him moving his thumb and trying to wiggle around. Looks like he's gonna try to stay in there, but you're gonna see him moving very slow. That's a I'm gonna tell you, this is something you don't see very happen very often, but the crowd from both sides clapping for the umpire, but that situation, glad to see him back in there. This is a, that's a tough one right there. I've been hit a couple of times, pitch it to my son inside the batting facility. Balls comes back and hits you, it's not comfortable. There's a foul ball off the right hand side for strike one. One ball, one strike. Caden Lowry at the plate. We're at the top of the fourth. Jaguars looking to add more runs. William blowing really hard out of the south right now. Pull it straight back into the field. Nice pitch. We're seeing a strike two over the top of it. I talked earlier about the only chance you got to get one out of here would be the right field. That ball's pushed foul off the right hand side. Another curveball comes in. Center fielder, left fielder playing fairly shallow. Right fielder's really deep. Ball hit to the third baseman, waiting on it to come down. Comes up with a throw. Able to get it to the first baseman in time, but just barely. That ball hit hard off the third. Get my bounce to it. Hey, Bobby, what's up? Open Stringer reached his last time up. Hit by the pitch. Hit the head the last time, so. Not looking for that again. First one bounces in way outside the ball one. It'll be a foul ball out of play over this right hand side. One ball, one strike. One out. The Jaguars having a little bit of time. Lining out the new pitcher. Let's see if can figure him out in a quick light. That fastball's fouled off his leg. Strike two. One ball, two strikes. One out. We're at the top of the fourth. Jaguars holding on to a 7 nothing lead over the Raiders of Lamar School. Curveball fouled off left-hand side. I will say. A disclaimer, we do not own the rights to this music. Had to put that out there. Make sure we can air these, or re air these games again. That's a really good pitch. Looked to be a changeup. Uh, just took something off of it, but that's a nice pitch. On number three, going to bring to the plate 19, Davin Lowry. With two outs as we play here at the top of the fourth inning, next to the Blake Wayne Academy is the first baseman, number 19, Davin Lowry. Fastball 
too far inside for ball one. Curve ball hit right back up the middle for a base hit for Davin Lowry. Center fielder going to come up and just toss it back to the infield. Really nice piece of hitting right there by 19, Davin Lowry. That curve ball just too much. Center fielder, number three, Jackson White. Brings to the plate, number three, Jackson White. Jaguars are cooking again. Two outs. Let's see if we make something happen here. Start to the pass ball there. Too high. One ball, no strikes. Runner standing on first. Number 19, Davin Lowry. Get your steps off. Make sure he doesn't get too far away. Davin's got good speed, so it wouldn't surprise me if they don't try to see him here. Last ball was right back over the top of my head and out of play. One ball, one strike, umpire. Going to get some more game balls. Going to put it in his mask. Try not to grip as much as he has to with that hand that got hit. You can see. Checking his clicker there. One ball, one strike, two outs. Runner standing on first, Davin Lowry. Flags are staying down right now. Hard hit ball, center field. Center fielder's going to wave everybody off and drifted to his left and was able to make the catch for the third out of the inning. So Jaguars not able to put any up there on the fourth. Do get one runner on and 19 Davin Lowry. And take the field defensively and see if they can continue to hold the Raiders off here at the bottom of the fourth. The bottom of the fourth inning for Lamar is number three, Jackson Whitcomb. Lead off for the Raiders, number three, Jackson Whitcomb. Gentleman taking over the mound position for the Raiders. Takes ball one high and outside. Swinging. Strike one, really good pitch right there by Ian Smith. Just had him way fooled as he was just walking up to the front of the box. It would be a changeup. Back with the fastball, trying to throw it by him. It just stays outside. Ian's fastball is going to – he's got to run to it. And he started hair bit outside to get him to chase it right now. That's a good pitch right there. High fly ball, left field. Coach. Stringers drifting back to the wall. I mean, right at the wall, and you see him back up against it and make the catch of the first out. So, just a really long out. And I'm going to tell you, the ball's probably out of here if that wind's not blowing that hard. It didn't look to be hit that hard. Next so play for the barn is the center fielder, number 10, Wyatt Bond. Wyatt Bond, center fielder. Okay, 
Ian standing up there ready to throw. Good pitch. Nice job by Ian Smith, just right on that outside corner. Nice job by the catcher, Caden Lowry, just framing it up perfectly. Curveball, really nice pitch. Batter didn't like it, but I'll tell you, that was a great pitch. May have been a little low from what I can tell. I can't tell if it was inside or not, but come back to the inside. And Fights it off, pushes it down the left field side for a foul ball. One ball, two strikes, everything stays the same. One out. The center fielder, number 10, Wyatt Bond. Nice hit, left center field. Jackson White drifts over and is able to make the catch. To be honest, I thought that was going to get down off the bat, but uh, I'm not sure if the wind held it up or if it's a back stand. Either way, ball seven, held up Jackson White. Number seven, Sully Reed. A lot of ground, really fast. Drifted over and made the catch. Second out of the inning, Sully Reed. Third baseman now at the plate. Hard hit ball, shortstop, Kipper Williams stays down, comes up, goes to first, and that's going to be three up, three down. Nice job from the Jaguars. And again, a great job by 15, Ian Smith on the mound, just filling up the strike zone. The defense plays very good behind him, so we're going to go into the top of the field. Jaguars holding on to a 7 to nothing lead over the Raiders in Lamar School. Top of the fifth inning for Wayne Academy is number 15, Ian Smith. Ian Smith, pitcher for the Jaguars, going to be leading off the Jaguars here at the top of the fifth. Oh, it's ball one bouncing on the outside part of the plate. Fastball hit back to the shortstop. Harrington charging, takes the glove. On throw to first, but he misses the first baseman as he threw a bullet to first base. That was going to be a going to be a good catch if he made it, but nonetheless got by the first baseman, and that's going to bring in number eleven Cohen Wally to be the courtesy runner for fifteen. Ian Smith coming in to hit for the Jaguars is going to be number four, Kale Graham. I'm assuming Next he is going to play Wayne Academy is a new hitter. It's number four, Kale Graham. Kale's at the plate ready to go and doesn't realize we don't have an umpire. <laughs> now he's going to step out when the umpire gets there. So We're ready to go now. Number four, Kale Graham at the plate for the Jaguars. Got Cohen Wally standing on first. Kale's going to look at the fastball call on the outside corner for strike one. Ball hit down the right-hand side, but it's going to be foul for about 10 feet. Coach Richie Anderson had to move out of the way of that one before he's going to get hit himself, but that's going to be 
Strike two. No balls, two strikes. Nobody out. You can see the Raider faithful. Want to get that call. That was a good pitch. Uh, it's one that's tough to lay off of. And nonetheless, Kale did and got the ball. Call for him. One ball, two strikes. Nobody out. Runner standing on first. Courtesy runner, Kale Graham. Oh, excuse me. Kale Wallace. He takes off and he goes. Swing and strike three. Let's see if he pitch. Oh, me. Uh, Cohen dove way too early and actually stopped before he made it there. Kale swung swing and strike three. So he got it out of the plate. Wally able to throw in second base safely. Eli Mooney. <laughs> Coach Hillman's telling him you got to slide a little later. Don't slide so early. Eli Moody at the plate for the Jaguars. Made a great place out in the field just a minute ago. He just looks at ball one, low on outside. The runner standing in score position. He's a nine hole hitter. Ooh. Ball strike on the outside part of the plate. One ball, one strike. One out. Runner in score position. The foul ball off the right hand side. Base counting. One ball, two strikes. Moody, a nine hole hitter for the Jaguars. If he can get on, he's going to bring up the leadoff hitter, number seven, Kipper Williams. Holds off of that. I, don't, I, I want to call it a curveball. It may be a slider, but I'm not able to pick up those pitches and understand what they are. But nonetheless, two balls, two strikes. It was low and outside. So it doesn't matter what it was, low and outside for a ball. Swinging right back at the second. Oh, it goes off the second baseman's heel of his glove. So everybody's going to be safe. So again, that's just what it is. Got to make the routine plays, and that's one right there that I feel quite certain Lamar School probably makes nine times out of ten. But in that situation, he didn't. He just went off the heel of his glove. And Next, they play Gwen Academy the, the shortstop, number that's seven, Kipper Williams. Leadoff guy at the plate, number seven, Kipper Williams. Got runners standing on first and third, one out. Fly ball here is going to push another run across the plate. Should get another gentleman in score position. All strike on the outside corner. Nice pitch, nice location. Not a whole lot you can do with it right there. Kepper doesn't really like the call. If I was a batter, I wouldn't like it either, but uh, I'm, I'm a defensive team. I want that call all night long. It's gonna be a foul ball off the left-hand side for strike two. Again, another good pitch. I do see somebody else down in the bullpen for Lamar School up and throwing. William strike three for the second out. That's going to bring next to the plate number 21, Walker Hayes. Two outs we play here at the top of the fifth inning. Next to the plate for the Jaguars is the DH number 21, Walker Hall. Again, everything stays the same defensively for the Raiders. Still playing really deep in right field. Runs away from that one. If he doesn't want to get hit in that arm or in the back, that hit in the back last ball game. He didn't want to get hit again, but nonetheless, Jaguars got to have base runners. That ball's low and outside for ball two. Defensively for the Raiders. Center fielder still playing in the same spot. I said he was playing shallow earlier, but I've been watching pretty good since then. He's pretty much staying in the same spot. Left fielder got his spot worn out where he normally is, and so does right field. So they play a little bit deeper in right than they do everywhere else. 
Watch his ball three. Three balls, no strikes. Let's see if he turns him loose. <laughs> Don't try to walk it out. You pretty much knew it was going to be a strike call on that one. It's not where he really could do a whole lot with it and make a good swing on the outside corner. Let's see if he can get one here. Three balls, one strike, two outs. Two on, standing on first and third. Base hits, going to score them. Runner takes off from first, and that's going to be ball four. So base is loaded for the Jaguars. It's going to bring up another hot hitter, where number two is Cade Lowry. Play for Wayne Academy is the catcher, number two, Cade Lowry. Watches the curveball drop in for strike one. Nice pitch. Caden looking for the fastball, something to dry somewhere. And watch that one bounce away, gets away from the catcher down the third baseline. Everybody's going to move up. And that's a really good job. Cole and Wiley paying attention, just jumped immediately and saw it gone. Both the base runners took off themselves. That ball shot way off to the left-hand side. Really not an opportunity to do anything from the catcher to be able to run and get it. Had he did, it was going to open up home plate. Third baseman had to run over and get his hands on that one. Runners now stand second and third. Hard hit ball. Another line drive base hit back to the right-hand side. Jaguars going to push one across. And Ho Walker up on third. Caden Lowry stays on his hot streak. Next to play for Wayne Academy is number 22, Colton Stringer. So Colton Stringer's going to be walking up to the plate, but number eight, Hagen Havard's going to go in and run for Caden Lowry. He has done just a tremendous job at the plate today for the Jaguars. Doing a good job behind the plate and catching, but... Man, with the bat in his hand today, has been really, really hot. Jaguars push that lead out to 9 to nothing in the fifth inning. Still got runners on. One in score position down on third base is Walker Hall. Hagen Havard with good speed there at first. Wouldn't surprise me. You see him moving here. Hard hit ball right side. Going to get through. Walker Hall going to step on first. They're going to hold Hagen up. At second base, just try not to force anything. The ball was hit so hard, got to right field really fast, and right field didn't have to do a whole lot to get it in. But really nice job by the Jaguars for putting the ball in play. Lottery's down with two outs. Number 19, Davin Lowry. That's the play, 19, Davin Lowry. Jaguars got 10 runs across here in the ball game so far, three here at the top of the fifth. Hard hit ball down to the right. Side, excuse me, left side is going to be in, inside the base pass. So you got a fair ball. Jaguars are going to push another one across. I apologize, getting tongue tied on that one. Another hard hit ball by the Jaguars just inside the third baseline. Jaguars put another four spot up so Next far here. Academy is number three, Jackson White. Jackson White. Steps in. It's a ball one low and outside. And easy strike one. Pitch on the outside corner. Foul ball coming right back at us for strike two. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Jaguar still got runners in score position, standing on second and third. Dalton Stringer standing on third. Davin Lowry standing on second. 
high fly ball. I mean, way up in the air. Left fielder, center fielder. Everybody's running in. Everybody's, holy cow. Wasn't sure where the right fielder was going, but, but he backed off of it, and center fielder called everybody off, and he comes flying in just outside the third. As you saw him make the catch, the third out of the inning. The top of the Jaguars can put another four spot on the board. So going into the fifth inning, Jaguars holding on to an 11-0 to lead over the Raiders and Lamar Cruz. Leading off the inning for Lamar is number four, Wes Richard. Stepping in from Lamar School here in the bottom of the fourth inning, excuse me, fifth inning. First baseman tonight, number four, Wes Pritchard. Wes fouls that first one off for strike one. Ian's coming with the pitch here. It's back on that fastball. Like I said, it's got a good bit of run on it. Just not able to get that one located tonight. But nonetheless, still doing a great job pitching so far. Just can't get that particular one located. One ball, one strike. Nobody out. Lead off hitter. The first baseman tonight, Wes Pritchard. Feel quite certain we will see him on the play on the mound tomorrow night at Wayne Academy. Fouls that one off. And the school evens up the count. Two balls, two strikes. Here's a stretch and throw. And stays outside. Full count. Three balls, two strikes. The leadoff guy here at the bottom of the fifth. Richard puts both toes up on the chalk. Nice pitch. Really good job by Ian Smith putting that ball in there. Really nothing Richard could do with it but foul it off his fist. Count stays full. Was pushed to left field. Left fielder going to settle underneath it. And Colton Stringer makes the catch. The first out of the inning. So, nice job by Colton Stringer being in place. With a really good job. Next by the Raiders is the best hitter. Number eight, Nick Lee. 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 Stays a little bit too low to get the call strike. We'll start him off. One ball, no strikes. Ball hit back to the shortstop. Flipper Williams comes up and takes his time and makes the throw to the first baseman. And that is two up and two down. 
Man, a nice job by Ian Smith at the defense work behind. Smithy Blake Lamar is the catcher, number five, Walker Mims. And always happen like this. We're making it look easy tonight so far through this ball game. Walker Mills at the plate for the ball. That's a five strike one. And then I'm really picking up and dusting right now. Ooh, that's a really good pitch. Didn't get to call him out. One ball, one strike. It's still a really nice location. Ball hit high to the right side. Looks like the wind's going to push it out of play, and it does. That and Lowry. Looked like he had a bead on that one. The wind is blowing so hard, just pushes it way out of play. That's going to be the second strike. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Almost got too far inside. Even at the count. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. He's going to step off. But they're trying to make sure they got the pitch called in right. Foul ball back right at us. He stays the same. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Not sure if the run rule is in effect here or not. We are in the bottom of the fifth. Aguilar is leading by score 11 to nothing, but I'm not positive if there's a run rule in effect or not. Right through caught on the inside corner. And that is going to be the ball game. The run rule is in effect. So Jaguars going to take one game one in this series. A score of 11 to nothing over the Raiders of Lamar School. We'll be back in action tomorrow night at Wayne Academy. They're scheduled for five and seven at Wayne Academy tomorrow. Weather should be a lot better, so we'll be back going again tomorrow night.